Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube, and in this video, we are gonna look at how you can create a slicer panel in Power BI and take it to the next level. Let's do this. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. Slicer panels. I actually did a video on this not too long ago, but I wanted to revisit this because there's been some new improvements in Power BI and I wanted to show you how to take it to the next level. So as part of that, I'm retiring the old video and we're just gonna make a whole new one. Why would I even want a slicer panel? And the idea behind it is that I could actually show or hide those slicers to free up space with inside of my report and just make it a little cleaner. Another thing to keep in mind though is, do you even need a slicer? And you may wanna consider whether I actually have a slicer or I wanna do it on the filter pane. I've got a video linked up above where you can take a look at that and decide where's the right place to put it. But you may actually want a couple of slicers on your main report because those are the most relevant for your users. Also, it may be that you wanna take advantage of maybe like a visual level filter where your selections with inside of the slicer will change dependent on what you're doing. All right, enough of all this talking. Let's jump into my laptop and actually see how we can do this. All right, I've got a report here that's got some visuals and whatnot. And what we want to do is add slicers to this report. And we're going to create that slicer panel. So the first thing I have to do, got to add a slicer. So let's go ahead and go over to calendar. We'll jump and grab year and drag it to an empty spot on the canvas so I don't add it to something else. We'll turn it into a slicer and I'll choose the drop down and make this a list. Let's move it over to where our slicer panel is gonna be. And that's pretty awful. So let's go ahead and adjust some of the formatting and we'll bump up the font and we'll change the font color to black. Good to go. All right, I can't, this is pretty awful, right? I can't see the slicer because there's stuff behind it. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a shape. So we're gonna add a rectangle of note, I'm using a color, I'm using a theme inside of this report. So that's why these colors are automatically picking up the way they do. So definitely use a theme if you can. Otherwise, change the color formatting as you see fit. I'm good with leaving it as it is. So now it still looks pretty awful. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to view and go to the selection pane. And here we can adjust the Z order. That's right, I said Z order. So where is it from a layer perspective? And we can adjust that with the selection pane. And so right now, let's go ahead and select the rectangle. It shows up down here. So we'll drag it all the way up to the top underneath the slicer. I'm gonna rename these items too. We're gonna make them have a name that is relevant. All right, cool. We wanna, let's fix this up a little bit, make sure it's in the right space. Give it a little bit on the top. Then I'm gonna add another slicer here for our country. So add sales country again, put it in a spot where it's not gonna be added to another visual. Change it to a slicer. Let's move it over. Instead of redoing all that formatting again, I'm just gonna select the one I formatted, go back to home, format painter, bam. Now we're good to go on that, undo Australia. So we see everything, cool. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a button. So we're gonna do a left arrow and we'll move it, resize it a little bit. And there's our panel. Now let's go ahead and fix up the slicers a little bit more. Let's uh, do the names in the selection panel. All right, cool. So we've got four elements here. This is where we can take this to the next level. Let's go ahead and select all four of these elements. So we'll select the slicers. Select the back button, and then we'll select the rectangle. They are all selected. What I wanna do now is right click, say group, and then create a group. <gasps> oh my gosh, look at this, over on the selection pane. Selection pane, we'll call this slicer panel, all right? And if I expand that, I see all four of those elements right there. So now, what's cool about grouping is that all four elements now will act as one in terms of selections. The thing to note about grouping though is I can still select the individual elements, so be aware of that. But in general, this makes things a little easier. So what I can do, 
now is go ahead and create a bookmark. And so let's go ahead and choose the bookmark pane. A bookmark is really just taking a snapshot of a current state of an element, and then we can go back and forth between bookmarks to show and hide. So what I wanna do is create two bookmarks. One is with the slicer panel shown. So let's go ahead and add a bookmark, and I'll rename it show slicer panel. What I wanna do on this bookmark also is click on the ellipsis and uncheck data. I don't want the current state of the slicer saved with the bookmark. So for example, here, nothing selected. If data was selected and then I go and show the slicer panel, it would reset my slicer selection. I don't want that to happen. So uncheck data there if I just want a visual state of this. For the second bookmark, what we're gonna do is instead of having to show or hide those four elements individually, I can just hide the slicer panel group and then add another bookmark, call it hide slicer panel, and remember to uncheck data. So now I've got two bookmarks, one where I'm showing the slicer pane and one where I'm hiding the slicer pane. All right, so let's go back and show that slicer pane. What I wanna do now is wire up my given button here. So the back button, let's go ahead and select the back button. And what we're gonna do is come down to action. We're gonna turn it on and change my type to bookmark. And when I select that, I want to hide the slicer panel. We'll give it a tooltip. There we go. So now when I hover over it, I'll see my tooltip. In Power BI Desktop, I wanna hold down the control button and select it. When you're in the service, you don't have to hold down the control button. All right, so now we're in the state where the slicer panel is hidden. So we need to do something to be able to show the slicer panel. In comes a image. So let's go ahead and add an image here. I happen to have an image right here. We'll call it menu icon. It's a little hamburger. Go ahead and resize this, move it down right here. And then with that image selected, I can do the same thing. Come over to action, we'll expand it, change it to a bookmark, and then change that bookmark to show the slicer panel, give it a tooltip. And again, when I hover over it, I see my tooltip, hold down control in Power BI desktop only, select it, bam, there's my slicer panel, and then bam, slicer panel is hidden. That's amazing, right? A couple things that make this really next level. One is that grouping feature. The fact that I can group given visuals together in a single group and then show hide those, that provides an amazing experience for when we're doing bookmarks or things of that nature. I can group things together instead of having to just manually select and hide, especially if there's a lot of items in my report. Bookmarks are another thing that just help take this to the next level with the ability to save states and be able to move things in and out. I've also got another video that you can go check out with Amanda Kofsky that talks about buttons and taking buttons to the next level. That goes into some details about bookmarks using with buttons and using buttons in a very unique way. So check that out as well. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What do you think? Are you using a slicer panel? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, are you using the groups feature? It's pretty cool. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.